The London Underground is one of the most iconic, but also one of the busiest mass transit systems in the world. And its busiest line is the Northern Line. In 2019, this line carried around 340 million passengers. For a bit of a comparison, I'm from Sydney, and that's almost as many passengers that were carried by Sydney's entire suburban train network that year. In fact, the Northern Line has not just reached capacity, but exceeded it, with it estimated to be running at about 130% capacity during the morning peak. It's not even super uncommon to see people queuing outside some of the line's busier stations, like here outside of Clapham Common, because there's not enough capacity in the station for all the people who want to use it. So it's pretty clear this line is pretty busy, and will probably only keep getting busier. But does Transport for London have any plans to ease this overcrowding? Well, yes, in fact they have multiple, one of which could be Crossrail too, although I think that's a topic that deserves its own video. One of the other plans, however, could actually be a lot simpler, although it would still be very impactful. That being the topic of this video, which is the plan to split the Northern Line in two which has the potential to dramatically increase the line's capacity. Hi all, I'm City Moose, and I make videos about public transport and urbanism, so consider subscribing if that interests you. If you want to support the channel, I also have a Kofi, it is always appreciated. But now, let's try squeeze back onto the Northern Line. A lot of the Northern Line's issues stem from the fact that it is really, really old. In fact, parts of the line are actually the oldest still operating deep-level underground passenger railway in the world. So, unsurprisingly, the line was not built with its modern usage in mind. The Northern Line has its origins in 1890 with the City and South London Railway, which ran from Stockwell in the south up to King William Street in the city. King William Street station didn't last long, and in 1900 the line was extended north to Moorgate via Bank Station. This line would keep getting extended and by 1907 had reached as far south as Clapham Common and as far north as Euston. Also in 1907, the Charing Cross Euston and Hampstead Railway opened, which at the time was a completely separate railway, and as its name suggests, ran from Charing Cross up to Euston and then up to Camden Town, where the line branched off towards Golders Green and Archway. In 1913, both these lines would fall under the control of the Underground Electric Railways Company of London, who would start the work to combine them into the Northern Line we know today. In 1914, the line to Charing Cross was extended to Embankment. Then, in 1926, it was extended further to connect with the line to Stockwell at Kennington, creating the line's southern connection. Two years prior to that, the lines had also been connected at Camden Town, creating the line's northern connection. These connections meant that trains coming from the south could either run up through the West End via the Charing Cross branch, or through the City of London via the Bank branch. Then, once those trains got to Camden Town, once again they could choose to either run up to Golders Green or Archway. So, I think we're starting to see how splitting the line might work. Around the same time, the line was also undergoing various extensions, those being south to Morden and northwards to Edgware, both of which are its current termini. Then, in the 1940s, parts of what was the London and North Eastern Railway were taken over by the Northern Line, which saw the line to Archway continue up to High Barnet and Mill Hill East. The line would then stay much the same until 2021, when its most recent extension opened, adding a new small branch from Kennington to Battersea Power Station. This now meant that the line branched in the north before meeting at Camden Town, again in central London before reaching Kennington, and then again heading south. Camden Town and Kennington stations have even been built in such a way that trains can cross from one branch to the other without ever needing to cross tracks or share platforms. We can see this if we look at this old poster for the design of Camden Town Station, where a train from the Charing Cross branch, for example, can get onto the High Barnet branch without ever interfering with a train coming from the Bank branch that's heading up to Edgware, and it would work much the same way heading south at Kennington. Now, currently, the Northern Line operates so that stations on any particular branch will have services connecting to a number of other branches. If we look at High Barnet Station, for example, from here you can get services that use the Charing Cross and Battersea Power Station branches, as well as services using the Bank branch towards Morden. The Northern Line split would change this, and turn this mishmash of branches into two distinct and much simpler lines. Now, which branches would be connected with which has not been confirmed, however it does seem likely that the newly separated lines would follow these same routes as the old companies that originally built those railways. 
This would see the Battersea Power Station branch in the south connected up with the Charing Cross branch in central London, and then with the Edgware branch north of Camden Town. Which would then leave the High Barnet and Mill Hill East branches to be connected up with the Bank and Morden branches. What these new lines would be called is anyone's guess at this point, although I'm sure one of them will keep the name Northern, so maybe the other could be called Southern to keep it consistent. Regardless, splitting the lines like this would bring some pretty substantial benefits, including making the lines less confusing to navigate, as well as improving their reliability because an issue on one branch would no longer affect all of the other branches. However, the most notable benefit splitting the lines would bring would be capacity. Currently, the merging of trains from the various different branches at Kennington and particularly Camden Town can often leave trains sitting and waiting for trains from other branches. This waiting puts a limit on the line's capacity, with the Charing Cross and Bank branches only able to handle about 24 trains per hour each. If the lines were separated, this waiting wouldn't need to happen, and it's suggested that both lines could be able to carry up to 36 trains per hour which would be a significant increase and is the same amount of trains per hour as the Victoria Line, which is literally the second most frequent rail service in the world. This would be a dramatic improvement to the capacity of the line and this alone should make a huge improvement to its overcrowding situation. But on top of that, by separating the lines you would remove another major bottleneck, that being the people waiting on the platforms. As I mentioned, the Northern Line is really old and a lot of its stations were not built to handle the kinds of crowds they now get. The platforms at some of the stations can be quite narrow, I'm looking at you Clapham, and this can become a problem especially when people are waiting on the platform for the train to their particular branch. With the simplified lines, those people would just get the first train that arrives and take it to Kennington, Euston or Camden Town to change for the other line which would mean less people waiting on the platforms, so less crowded stations. But this benefit is also one of the major drawbacks of the plan that's keeping it from happening. As I've already mentioned, basically all of the infrastructure to allow the Northern Line to be split into two independent lines already exists, and given TfL is on board with the plan, why hasn't it gone ahead yet? Well, the main reason is those interchanges. Stations like Kennington and Camden Town are already super busy, and by forcing a lot more people to interchange at these stations, they would only get busier, which is something they might not be able to handle. Camden Town is already massively overcrowded, and simply would not be able to handle the added pressure. Not only is the station already currently an important interchange station, but it also serves the very popular Camden Market, making it especially popular on weekends. The result is, at times, Camden Town Station has been made exit only because it simply could not handle the number of people needing to move through it. If the Northern Line were to be split, Camden Town Station would need some pretty substantial upgrades to allow it to cope with the number of people who'd want to interchange through it, and this is pretty much the main roadblock preventing this project going ahead, because while TfL has tried to get these upgrades underway, they've struggled to secure funding. The proposed upgrade would see new entrances for the station built, as well as new tunnels to create new pathways for interchange between the platforms. On top of that, it would finally see the station get proper step-free access. However, to do so would likely require significant closures on Camden Town Station and what is the busiest line on the underground, as well as potentially demolishing some heritage-listed architecture in the precinct. As a result, the works would be pretty complex as well as pretty costly. Now, there have been some attempts to get the ball rolling. In 2017, TfL started a consultation process for the upgrade which found overwhelming support for the scheme and aimed to start construction in 2020, but that never happened. What has probably been our most recent update on the project came from London Mayor Sadiq Khan this year when he told the London Assembly that TfL still lacked the funding to go ahead with the project. In my view, this is a pity, it's clear the Northern Line is struggling to provide enough capacity to keep up with demand, and splitting the line provides a pretty simple way to fix that. And while I'm sure upgrading Camden Town Station won't be particularly cheap, this project would be relatively quick and cost effective to do given the benefits it would provide. Beyond just the capacity improvements, an upgrade could bring big accessibility benefits, and Camden Town Station is becoming quite run down and sorely needs some love. Ultimately, I think this project is a bit of a no-brainer, and I think it's past time the UK government got around to funding it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. 
If you really liked it, you could consider supporting my Kofi. It is always appreciated. But as always, I'm Kyle, aka City Moose, and thanks for watching.